Well, I made it. I'm exhausted, but I made it. Backpacking through an area that I haven't been through for quite a few years now. This is one of the very first areas that I backpacked through solo when I started solo backpacking. And so it's just a special area to me. And I just love it out here. There's a lot of wildlife. I can hear so much wildlife around me. I've seen mountain goats up on the mountain before. I know there's moose and deer and elk in the area. I saw some pika and marmots on my hike up. There's just a lot of cool wildlife. A lot of my time looking for wildlife, as I've mentioned in previous videos, is uh, spent backpacking, spent exploring new areas. I live out of my backpack a lot, so I rely very heavily on the gear that I use. And uh, backcountry, photographing backcountry wildlife can be very challenging and you really need to immerse yourself in the wilderness and nature and uh, it's just something I, I love doing, I'm passionate about. And so this week's video, I'm going to dive in a little bit uh, into some of the gear that I use for backpacking. I'll go over the items that I use and uh, I'll kind of tell you why they work for me, why I chose them and why I still use them. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of gear in here. I'm not going to be able to cover it all in this single video without boring you to death. So uh, I've broken up my gear into different categories. So this week I'm going to cover my sleep system. I'll again show you what I use, why I use it. And then in future videos, I'll go over some of the other gear that I use, my cooking system, uh, the backpacks that I use, all that stuff I'll dive into and uh, just yeah show you again what gear I'm using and why I use it uh, but again you know this is my this is my home away from home I spend a lot of time living out of my backpack and these items that I have in my backpack these are some of my most you know prized possessions that I have because I rely on them so much and uh, like I say I just I consider this my second home you know the wilderness just because I'm out here so much. So I'm excited for this video. I'm excited to be back out here. Uh, I've got some beautiful light right now though. So I'm gonna go out and get some pictures, get my camp set up, uh, get some dinner cooked. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. We're gonna cover some of these items that I use and uh, I hope you enjoy this video. It's gonna be a fun one for me at least. So I hope you enjoy as well. What a beautiful morning it is out here. I'm having such a good time. It's so relaxing out here. Last night I went out, got some video footage of some of the wildflowers, some of the scenery, and then I just sat and watched the sunset. It was extremely peaceful, very relaxing, something I needed very much. So I'm glad that I did that. I slept incredibly well last night, and uh, I got up this morning, went out, got some more scenic stuff and it's just been so much fun. I'm loving it out here. Like I mentioned, I slept very, very well last night and I attribute a lot of that to this gear that I use, the gear that I'm about to talk about. Uh, this is gear that I've been using for years now and it works for me, but just because it works for me doesn't mean it's gonna work for you. So before you go out and just buy a bunch of stuff, uh, make sure you do your research, find what's gonna work best for you. And just to preface this video, None of the brands of the gear that I use, I'm not sponsored by any of them. I'm not paid to promote their gear or anything. This is just gear that I've used for years and I love. I've tried a lot of different brands, a lot of different items, and these are the items that I've just kind of stuck with for years now because they work for me and I love them. And also just to preface this video, this is not a backpacking channel. Uh, this YouTube channel is 
dedicated to wildlife photography and just appreciating and immersing yourself into nature. That's what I love doing and that's what this channel is about. But if you are a backpacker, because I do backpack a lot to get to the backcountry wildlife that I photograph, hopefully you'll find some useful information here. And if you're a wildlife photographer or just an outdoor enthusiast who wants to get outside and backpack more, I really hope that this will be a useful video for you. Let's jump into these items though, and I'll tell you again what I'm using and why I use them. All right, the first item that I wanted to cover is my sleeping pad. I do use an inflatable sleeping pad, and this is a Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. It's a very popular sleeping pad. Uh, it's just their yellow pad. It's very light, uh, and it insulates extremely well. I love the inflatable pads just because they compress down so much. It is a little bit noisy. I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, the more I use it though, and I've used this for about eight years now, I believe, uh, the more I use it, the, uh, the less noise it seems to make. This pad, it's extremely light. It weighs in at 13 ounces. I weighed all this gear before I came on this trip. Uh, this is the weight of my gear. What's listed online may be a little bit different. It's very nice, keeps me very warm at night, and I think it's extremely comfortable. I love Thermarest products. You'll notice that quite a few of the items that I use are Thermarest. I've used many other brands, and Thermarest is my my favorite. I love their items. Uh, this pad has gone through the ringer. I've used this pad so many times. It's still going strong after about eight years and I just, I love this thing. Next item that I wanted to go over is my sleeping bag. This is my late spring, summer, and early fall sleeping bag that I use. It's a Mountain Hardware Phantom 32. It's a great bag. Uh, it's a down bag, so if you're researching products, you're when you get to the sleeping bag portion, you're gonna be reading about down bags and synthetic bags. I've used both, so what a down bag is, is they use either duck or goose down generally, and they fill the bag, and it's extremely warm, and it compresses down very small. I mean, this is about the size of my head. I do have a large head, but um, you know, it's a small sleeping bag, and to keep me comfortable in, uh, you know, down to 32 degrees, that's what that 32 is, you know, it packs down extremely, extremely small. Some of the pros and cons with the different types of sleeping bags is when you get into down bags, if these get wet at all, they stop insulating. You're gonna be very uncomfortable, you're gonna get very cold. As soon as these get wet, they just don't insulate very well. A lot of the sleeping bags, they uh, have, you know, the material on the outside can be water resistant, but still, if water is on there for too long, it's gonna get through, it's gonna go wet, and you're gonna be really uncomfortable very fast. Uh, synthetic, one of the downsides for those is just the size. They don't compress down as much as down bags do. I've got a synthetic bag that I used to use, and I switched to a down bag just because of the size difference. There's a huge size difference, and you know, the space that I can save in my backpack when I switched to the down bag was enormous for me. I can fit more camera gear in there now, and it's just, it's been great. Thing to remember with sleeping bags, when you're not using them, you need to let them loft. So every trip, when I get home, I unpack all my gear. First thing that I do is I take my sleeping bag out and I hang it up in a closet where it can loft, where it can expand. If you keep it compressed all the time and you, you know, you're getting out a few times a year, or even just in between trips, if you've always got it compressed and you get out and you lay it out on your sleeping pad and you haven't let it loft in the meantime, that down gets so compressed, it's gonna have a hard time um, kind of filling back out and insulating you. And your 32 degree bag all of a sudden becomes a 45 degree bag, you know, something like that. So very important thing to remember with uh, sleeping bags is when you're not using them, 
you need to find some closet or something at home where you can just let them let them loft, let them hang, uh, and uh, let them you know fill back out. It's one of the you know best ways to preserve your sleeping bag. I've had this sleeping bag for oh I think seven or six or seven years now, and I use it so much, and it works just as well now as it as it did when I first got it. So great great sleeping bag it's a pretty light sleeping bag as well this weighs in uh, when I weighed it yesterday it was 25 ounces so uh, it's pretty lightweight for the uh, type of weather that I'm able to use it in and I just I love this sleeping bag you can uh, get warmer in those sleeping bags though and uh, the method of doing that is what I'm actually going to talk about next so the next item that I wanted to talk about is a sleeping bag liner. This liner is a Alps liner and essentially what this is is a uh, sheet for your sleeping bag. Um, it's sewn to be you know in the shape of a sleeping bag as well so it's not just this open sheet that's going to get all tangled. Uh, you actually climb inside this and then you go inside your sleeping bag and it's uh, just a liner that goes in there and I've read various things online that these help insulate up to 10 to 15 degrees additional onto what your sleeping bag already does. There's a few different reasons I use a sleeping bag liner, uh, not just for its insulation uh, properties or, you know, being able to insulate you more. You know, last night it was pretty warm. I slept with my sleeping bag open. I didn't need this liner to help keep me warm, but I still use it every time I go out, no matter the season. And the main reason I do that, and the main reason I recommend you always use a sleeping bag liner, is to help keep your sleeping bag clean. Especially if you're out backpacking as much as I am, using a liner helps keep your sleeping bag clean. And when you get home, you just pop your liner in the washing machine and wash that, and you're good to go. If you've ever washed a sleeping bag before, especially a down bag, you'll know it's extremely difficult and time consuming and there's special soaps you have to buy, all this stuff. And so after a long backpacking trip, instead of having to wash my sleeping bag every other week or, you know, once a month, whatever, it's my liner that I'm washing and then I can just wash my sleeping bag, you know, every six months or whatever it, whatever it is. So sleeping bag liner, I highly recommend you get one, it, you know, anytime you're sleeping in a sleeping bag. Plus, it feels a lot better in my opinion. It feels like you're wrapped up in your sheets at home versus this, you know, smooth material um, that kind of rustles when you move and sleep. I just, I like the feel of a sleeping bag liner a whole lot more. This liner weighs in at about 11 ounces uh, when I weighed it yesterday. So uh, it's not too heavy and the trade-off in my opinion is well worth it not having to wash my sleeping bag after every trip instead i can just wash this it's worth the 11 ounces in my opinion next item that i wanted to review is a pillow and i've i've got a couple different types of pillows that i want to talk about this is the pillow that i mainly use it's another thermarest um, item it's a Thermarest compressible pillow is what it's called and it's it packs down to about this size I compress it down in this little stuff sack that I have a little bit more but what you do is it rolls up into itself and you take it out and much like the down sleeping bag you want to let this loft when you're at home and as soon as you get to camp uh, once your tent's set up you want to pull it out and start letting it loft a little bit and you know, it looks a little flimsy right now, but once this thing lofts, it, I mean, it's big and it's solid and it is comfortable. Uh, I've known people to buy these to use as their pillow at home uh, versus, you know, some pillow that you buy at Bed Bath & Beyond or whatever, just because they're so comfortable. I love this pillow. This is my luxury item. If I had to choose one luxury item, backpacking, this is it. And uh, this once I got this pillow, this is what helped me to start sleeping so well at night backpacking, was this pillow. It, I love this thing. It's just, yes, it's very dear to me. Um, great pillow. I've tried other types of pillows before, and I've got one here. Also a Thermarest uh, product, but it's a, 
just a thermarest inflatable pillow kind of like a sleeping pad where it's you know inflatable and that becomes your pillow that you sleep on it gets bigger than that obviously if you're not wanting to pack you know the extra um, you know size and whatnot of using this type of pillow these inflatable pillows as this fly keeps buzzing around are very handy and they pack down incredibly small so uh, and this is one of the bigger ones I've got one that packs down to about half this size at home uh, but this is the one I prefer honestly it's a little bit thick thicker and more durable but it packs down you know very small for a pillow and it in, a, in an emergency or if I'm packing really light and really small uh, then I will just take this and it, it does a good job I like it so this compressible pillow that I use mostly uh, it's 11 ounces so that's my sleep system that I use things change a little bit depending on what area I'm in if I'm in the middle of the desert I'm not gonna be bringing my uh, 32 degree bag in the middle of summer a lot of times all I need is my liner or I'll bring a lighter sleeping bag that that is good up to 60 degrees or something like that uh, also in the winter I've got that larger sleeping bag that I use uh, but you know depending on the area I'm in what time of year it is things do change a little bit but for the most part these are the items that I use especially in the uh, summer backpacking months when I'm out here uh, these are always the items that I'll use and you'll see them in my other backpacking videos and and all that uh, they're just great items just to end with a couple tips for you and I've already mentioned some of them like letting your bag loft when you get home you want to do the same thing when you get to camp as well so as soon as you get to camp as soon as you set your tent up get your sleeping bag out and get it lofting and your pillow as well if you use one of those compressible pillows uh, just get it lofting so when you get back to camp at night if you're going out to photograph something and you get back at night uh, if you're to set it up then you're gonna have a period of you know time in your sleeping bag where you're a little chilly if it hasn't lofted yet but if you take the 10 seconds it takes to get it out get it lofting and then you go out get your pictures and come back when you're back to camp it's going to be lofted it's going to be warm for you to crawl into and you know there's not much better than that getting back to camp in the evening and having a warm sleeping bag waiting for you so uh, that's something I wanted to to leave you with as a tip also these items that I have uh, backpacking items especially the lighter you get the more expensive they tend to be so a lot of these items they can get pretty pricey up front but that doesn't mean you have to pay full price for them there's a lot of options out there uh, places you can go to get used or even brand new items at a very very discounted rate uh, especially near the end of each year when uh, brands are coming out with their new year model or whatever they need to get rid of those previous years items as quick as possible so I've gotten items before at 40 to 60 percent off and those are brand new items and it just there's a lot of great websites out there where you can go to get these brand new items at a very very discounted rate they might not always have the exact size that you want if you're getting clothing or you know something like that but a lot of these items you know size doesn't matter as much uh, and you can get these items at a very discounted rate if you're taking good care of your items that you use you can use those items for years and years and years uh, like I'd mentioned I've used many of these items for eight years on some of them and I've got items that I've used for even even longer and they're just as good as as the day that I first started using them so take care of your items after every trip just make sure you're cleaning stuff making sure you're lofting all the stuff that I've talked about and you can use these items for years and years to come and a lot of the uh, brands that you buy from check their warranty information before you buy something that's very important with this gear is check the warranties check what it covers because a lot of these items have lifetime warranties and uh, check you know the description of okay what does that actually cover that way if you have a problem with some gear that you have a lot of times you can send it back and they'll repair it or replace it for you and just send you a new one you know just to close out here I want to reiterate what I was saying last night I spend a lot of time living out of my backpack living out of a tent 
and I can honestly say I love it. I feel so comfortable here. It truly is a home away from home. I sank at home, if you will. That's how I consider it. And uh, I absolutely love it. I've spent a lot of time backpacking over the years, and it's just something I, I'm totally passionate about. The wildlife and scenery that I'm able to see by getting into the backcountry is just amazing, and I absolutely love it. If you ever have any questions about any backpacking gear, uh, any recommendations of gear, any questions of if I've used a specific item or why I choose one item over another, just let me know. I try to get back to every single comment that I get. And if there's an item that I'm not sure about, I'll let you know as well that I just don't know, but it might be something I try down the road. But uh, with that being said, you know, when you're out backpacking, you have to feel safe, you have to feel comfortable. That's uh, a necessity to have an enjoyable time. So I really do recommend that before you just go out and buy a bunch of stuff and, you know, plan some 70 mile backpacking trip, if you've never backpacked before, you know, start slow and uh, really put some thought into the items you're gonna be using and test them out on quick weekend trips first or something like that. And, uh, you know, if you if you put the time and energy into it, you'll just have an amazing time. Backpacking is a great way to get out into nature and a great way to see wildlife you may not see otherwise. So on that note though, I gotta hit the trail here. I've got a long ways to go today until I get to the next lake that I'm gonna camp at tonight. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like I said before, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, I appreciate the support. If you're new to my videos, uh, I hope you enjoy them. Let me know of any feedback you have in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. On that note, I'm going to hit the road. And uh, yeah, we'll see you later. Have a good week.